for the blood. Perceno fatty acid. You guys see that? That's oleic acid. But I want to bring a few points before I get into, into the real meaning. If I measure testosterone and cortisol in relationship to that dietary nutrients and workouts, this is a cool paper because as you have percent energy of protein higher, the lower your testosterone levels. Okay? But as you increase your saturated fat, okay, you can see that your testosterone goes up. <coughs> as you increase your polyunsaturated fat, your testosterone goes down. But they tell you to eat a lot of polyunsaturated fats. I'm going to prove to you today that is wrong. So whatever they have been teaching you is wrong. Okay? Now, only here you two solid side of heart attack, obesity slides, extra crispy, cancer strip. The reason I put that slide is, uh, I have a few people staying with me. I breakfast this morning because it's Lent. I'm fasting. Was about this much cream, half a stick of butter, and coffee. Is that true or not, Roy? Okay. That was my that was my breakfast this morning. I do you I do eat half a stick of butter almost every morning. Okay. Now, beef tallow. You guys, I just told you that beef tallow is the fat that comes from the beef, correct? 54% unsaturated fat. Let me repeat that. You guys buy beef tallow, or let me go even go farther, lard. You guys know what lard is, right? From the pig. And you guys say, that's saturated fat. Everybody tells you saturated fat. What percent of or lard? Only 40%. 60% is unsaturated fat. And to make it even more powerful, it is monounsaturated fats. OK? Mono, not poly, mono. Let me repeat that. Monounsaturated fat. People don't talk about that, but today you guys will learn. Chicken fat, look at that. 70% unsaturated. Again, mono, not poly, mono. OK? So people come to you and say, oh, don't eat lard. OK? Don't eat beef tallow. Because it's saturated fat. You ask it, what percent is it? They cannot answer because they don't know. They tell you it's 100% fat. It is 100% fat. The question is what percent, what kind of fat is okay? Fat, per, fat content is dependent on the animal diet. I show you here because I raise my own pigs, my own cows, my own goats. Okay, I do. Okay, now I put this slide because this that, that <coughs> slide is made by the government. Remember that government, they're always right, right? They always tell you the truth about everything. And and if you guys see that, I'm going to put steak. And you guys look at the colors. They don't look good here. But red is full. Mono is blue. And if you guys look at this, what is the highest content in every single animal? It's mono. It is not saturated. It's not polyunsaturated. It's monosaturated. The reason why is because mono are the key. Monosaturated fats are really, really important. Okay. Now, the only animal that even come close to having the same amount of mono to poly is the salmon. You guys know why? You guys know why? Because the salmon has to swim in cold waters. What happens when you put olive oil on the fridge? It gets hard. So a fish can be hard, have to move. So it's also depending on temperature where you live. Like Mr. Jordan Mooney was talking about getting into a, whatever he called that freezing thing, you know, I have one. I shouldn't name four of it, but I do have one in my office, right? <laughs> Ours is really safe. It pops your head out. You can push it up. I mean, get your ass outside naked, stay out for three minutes, come back in. <laughs> Go back outside in three, three minutes naked, come back in. Free, and you, you can do it in Ohio for five months. <laughs> <laughs> and I do tell that to my friend, <coughs> believe it or not. Okay. Omega 6 to 3 ratio. In cattle, okay? Confet 15 to 2. And I was nice enough to take this to Ohio State and I analyzed my own for my house. That fed three to two. That tells you how important feeding. It takes 30 days for DHA and 60 for EPA, for EPA to get a rich steady state. So a study that takes your fat, omega 3% or whatever on its head, you need to do it for at least 90 days to make a difference. Okay? Now, I put this slide because I want you to understand that the highest content of saturated fat is coconut oil and butter fat. They have the highest content of anything. More than lard, more than beef tallow. So when you get coconut oil, 
that actually kills you. That's why the USA Today said, God, the only tell you that if you eat coconut oil, it's going to kill you, okay? And it's not a freaking vegetable oil. Let me go through the list here. That all I know, so proud of this. I don't see any freaking dietitian vegetable oil in here, okay? <laughs> None. Okay. 1990, 2011. Okay. This one was very cool paper. This open heart. This is a cardiology. It's called the, uh, what is this called? General open heart. And they, what they did here basically was, I'm going to switch saturated fats for carbohydrates and omega-6. What happened? And the guy didn't do a study. The guy just said, I need to, I'm a cardiologist. I need to start looking at this because I'm telling my clients to change it. And I don't see anything of them getting better. Now, what happens, okay, if I increase polyunsaturated fat in place of saturated fat? And this, again, is a meta-analysis. Now, when I do meta-analysis, I'm going to look at Puerto Ricans because I'm Puerto Rican. I want to look. So this is defending me. At, how would I say it is actually agreeing with me, but it's still a meta-analysis. There were witnesses, but here he found out that when you truly look at it, looking at true saturated fats, looking at polyunsaturated fat six and mono, he found out that switching saturated fat <coughs> for carbohydrates or omega-6, it reduced the heart disease. But the problem is that the saturated fats that we were looking at it were high on what? Monounsaturated fats. Okay? But there's saturated fat. Now, there's another one. Dietary equal saturated fat by food source and easy those cardiovascular disease. In this one, this is the American Journal. Is that the Dietitian Journal or not? The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Yeah. That is the Bible for you guys, right? And they say, we're going to look at what happens when I look at food and saturated fat. And guess what they found out? Damn it. Saturated fats lower risk of cardiovascular disease. But it is not the damn saturated fat. Is that the content of the saturated fat goes up, but the content of the monosaturated fats double. Okay? <coughs> now, this is another meta analysis, saturated fat and micro disease. Another one, I mean, this all studies showing how saturated fats lower cardiovascular disease. Now, I want you to remember that when you do this, they look at only saturated fats. Now, I want to go a little even farther away than this. If I was going to buy cheese, if I was going to buy any source of meat, anything that has saturated fats, I would buy organic sources. I'm not selling you shit. I'm not selling you organic sources. I won't sell you my eggs I won't, because I keep them myself. I eat them myself. My meat, I eat myself. I don't want to give you any. And really, but I want to explain to you what happens. So what they did on this story, this one, the Journal of, of, of Torture Sports Medicine. They look at people that were losing weight and people that were not losing weight. They look at endurance as obese people, and they were doing a workout. And they said, we're going to do biopsies of the people that were obese because they were not losing weight with the program. We're going to find out what happened. So what they did is they did fat biopsies. And guess what you guys found out on the people that were fat on their fat? You guys know what this word is? We're going to You guys know what it is? That's fertilizer. It's also. It, this is also a component of Roundup. Okay, so I want you guys to know that the people who are losing weight, not because we're not doing exercise, it's because they have toxins on their fat. Remember the mm -hmm. last client that they said, oh, I lost weight and I, I got sick? Well, the problem is that the fat is a storage warehouse. We have to change it to a water soluble, to fat soluble. We have to change it so we can eliminate it somehow. Well, when the fat cells get so toxic, the body starts putting fat about around it. There's a fat called perilipin. Oh, you remember this word, perilipin. And perilipin is a fat that protects your fat from being digested or broken down. And the reason it does that is a protein fat that will prevent the breaking down of that fat because you have toxins. Now, digestive enzymes help you break that down. So if you want to lose weight, you have a patient that has difficulties, give it some enzymes. Give it lipase. It helps it break it down. Okay. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is <coughs> a bile acid. It makes testosterone, makes vitamin D, it makes sex hormones, it makes a little cortical. Okay, an easy way to learn your adrenal glands, salt, sweet, and sex. Remember that. Salt, sweet, and the deeper I go, the sexier I get. Remember that. So the first layer is salt, testosterone, second layer is sweet, cortisol, the last layer is sex, testosterone, and DHEA. 
How well you don't have to memorize all that mumbo jumbo scientific. The brain. Exactly 54% cholesterol or 60% fat. Okay? Don't eat fat. Just get dumber. That is the way to tell us don't eat fat because you get stupid here. Okay? Okay. These are studies that they did. This is the number one book read by physicians. It was Book of the Year of 2002. This is the Book of the Year in 2003. The reason I picked this book is because absolutely he's telling you everything that I'm telling you today is wrong. This guy is a cardiothoracic surgeon, blah, 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 MD, PhD. Another one that couldn't, wasn't enough for him to be MD, have to go PhD, so he, that guy has issues, okay? If you want to get out of school, okay? He said that fish oil do not work at all. He had thousands. You know what? And I decided to say, I'm going to go look at every single research he did. Well, this guy, I am Puerto Rican, so my, my language is Spanish. This guy cannot freaking read English. <laughs> or let me, make, let me make sure. He cannot look at numbers. Because when I look at the studies that he was presenting, 41% of them were absolutely for omega-3. But of course, the conclusion that he read was, <coughs> they're bad for you, like I showed you before. But this is the book of the year. Look it up. Okay. Now, this picture shows you the breakdown of each of those. Like, like you guys have it for your own lesson. This is a combined omega-6 to omega-3. Okay, you need a balance between both of them. This is how they're made, okay? Now, when you're making this, you guys see these enzymes, they compete. So you do eat too many omega-3s, you're gonna make more of this. If you eat too, too much omega-6, you're gonna make more of this. That's what they tell you when you have anti-inflammatory properties. You do not wanna do that. You wanna have a balance. There's a guy named G-O-D, you know? <laughs> GOD is better than MD, I'm better than PA, I'm better than MPs, okay? So I'm better than...